You see, Robert hasn't written me in three weeks. It's not like him. He went up to Lord Davenport's castle in the mountains north of here four months ago, looking for work, and sent me a letter saying he'd signed on as a servant. Yeah, the pay wasn't much, but he's managed to send small amounts home each week. Now he's gone silent, and the money has stopped. I'm worried that something's happened to him. There, there. I'm sure he's just busy at the castle. And when he finds the time, he'll catch up on his letters. I hope you're right. I'd give anything to know he's safe. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. But couldn't you go up to this lord's castle and ask about your son? Oh, were it that easy. Lord Davenport values his privacy, and strangers making inquiries are often shown the error of their ways. The Lord hires fallen builders, and they tend to be quick with their hammers. He calls himself the Black Mage, keeper of some ancient relic that gives him strange powers. The Black Mage, eh? Perhaps someone could make inquiries without using the front gate. Perhaps, but where would we find such a person? He'd have to climb the castle's outer wall, and then move around the grounds unseen. <laughs> I, um, have a small amount of experience in such matters. You? We don't know you at all. Why would you do this? Well, I'm visiting Eastdale for some relaxation. And I can't think of anything more relaxing than wandering through a man's castle in the middle of the night. Oh yeah, I can't pay you much, but I'll give you the wages my son's been sending me. If I can find enough gold lying around the castle while I'm looking for your son, I'll share it with you. You can keep your son's wages. I don't know about this. It does sound risky. But I need to know that Robert is safe. I accept your offer. Apologies, my lord, but shouldn't we take this opportunity to discuss the financial dealings? What do you wish to talk about? Well, since I brought you these strange inventor machines, no further transactions have been processed. Please understand that a financial advisor of my caliber can only work on continuous business. Of course, I can understand that. But first a question. In your opinion, what is it that characterized the great men of the past? Faith? Business acumen? Or his own determination paired with his knowledge? Well, um, strong belief, of course. Along with good business acumen. Archbishop Wolfgang von Eastdale had both a strong faith and an even stronger business acumen. But in the end, None of it did him any good. What happened? In his foolish belief, he thought that the gold treasure stolen from the pagans would give him magical powers. He had them melted down in the builder's forge. Then he had a thick golden armor made out of it and announced that he would use it to hike over the water. Because this 
was the will of the Builder. I understand. I can already imagine how it turned out. He jumped into a lake with all his armor and was never seen again. <laughs> well, it didn't even come to that. As he and his entourage set out for Williston Lake in full armor, a thunderstorm suddenly broke out. And before he and his entourage could get to safety, an incredibly mighty bright bolt of lightning struck his armor. He fell to the ground and stopped moving. Smoke rose from his helmet, and it smelled of fried chicken. How awful. Indeed. It wasn't until days later that his followers were able to break him free from the half-melted armor, and one could see that his body was well done. The peasants at the scene later described that they had never smelled anything so delicious. Then they lost their temper and devoured the roasted holy man's skin and hair. That's foul. I must say, I find this story rather repulsive. Indeed it is, my friend. But it does illuminate a fact I'd like to point out. Faith and business acumen are not the most important qualities of a great man. No, it takes a far-sighted man who combines the knowledge he has acquired over the years with his indomitable determination. This makes such a man a great man. And rest assured, my esteemed financial advisor, I plan to do great things, which will ultimately pay off for you, too, in ways you would not dare dream of.
thought I did spice. <coughs>
You hardly ate anything today, and your face has turned a deeply unhealthy color. It appears to me, my young friend, that something is preoccupied. Why don't you tell me what torments you so? Well, uh, yeah. In fact, I don't feel all that great. I think the beef ragu with peppermint sauce and sweet chestnuts that was served last night did not agree with my stomach. Ah, the beef ragu. A real delicacy, isn't it? But I admit you need a most robust stomach that you have to train over the years in order to enjoy that particular cuisine. Oh yes, yes. I totally agree with you in this regard. Uh, can I ask you a question? Of course, my friend. We have to make sure that our chronicler gets all the information he needs for his work. <laughs> well, I wonder to what extent, uh, well, um, do you think our lord has gone too far with his experiments? An interesting question, albeit a blunt one. And I wonder how you got there. However, you can rest assured, knowing that our patron always endeavors to conduct his experiments in harmony with the laws of nature. So you don't have to fear that something is going wrong. Oh, that calms me down quite a bit. I'm glad I asked. Thank you. Thank you. It was wise of you to ask, indeed. Still, I would advise you not to bother too much with these questions. We all don't want you to end up like your predecessor now, do we? Now that you mentioned it, I've always wanted to know what actually happened to him. Well, we found him upside down in a barrel one day, with only his legs sticking out. By the Builder! How did that happen? Well, it appears as though he asked too many questions on subjects that shouldn't have interested him. Who knows? According to other rumors, he devoured five portions of that sinfully spicy paprika goulash with chili sauce and black pepper, and then drank of said wine barrel and fell into it headlong, by accident. Oh. I see. Please, excuse me. I... I have to get back to work. That's right, get on with it. I'll see you at dinner. Have a nice night. Yeah. Well, I They don't hate like me or anything like those.
trying to find out the answer. So
Damn. I thought I heard something. What was that noise? This interrogation so far has not yielded the desired results, so I will ask you one more time. Do you confess your sins? No, sir. I don't even know what I've done to deserve this. We both know why you're here, so no more lies. I'm telling you the truth. I swear it on the builder. Ugh. <sighs> Well, you aren't giving me any other choice. So, we'll have to resort to other means. Have you ever heard of the Screaming Wall of Truth? Not really. Is that a book or something? No, it is anything but, my dear boy. The Screaming Wall of Truth is the ultimate truth-finding tool of the modern age. It has already proven its effectiveness in obtaining satisfactory results, and thus far, no delinquent has been able to withstand its application. Oh, what's going to happen to me then? The tool is very simple to use. Child's play, really. First, I protect my ears with these earmuffs. Then, I take one of these specially made handrails and drive it over this metal wall. Stop! Stop! I can't take it anymore. I'll tell you everything. 
Even what I don't know. Ha <laughs> ha! There we have it. So you confess. Yes, yeah, yes. It was me. I did it. I poured the fish sauce over the chocolates. I knew it. I knew it since the beginning. Guards, drag this scoundrel back down the hatch and throw him in his cell. I gotta say. Because I had assumed our patron would be much more oriented toward the old teachings. But now, I recognize that he is looking for the true folk. That's why he uses methods that are unorthodox, but certainly effective. Indeed, I too feel extremely at home here. For the first time in many years, I feel a sense of camaraderie that has disappeared in my old monastery over the years of restoration. Not to mention the convivial evenings where we were singing and eating delicious meals to celebrate the wisdom of the Builder. Still, I have to admit that I'm plagued by certain fears, and I wonder if we may not receive some divine punishment for our actions at a later date. To be completely honest, I'm so scared that I wake up drenched in sweat at night. You shouldn't worry too much about that, brother. Because who knows which religion is the right one? A new study by the University of Bridgeport has shown that 8 out of 10 world religions fail within the first 4 years. And where does this failure come from? I don't know. Because many of these religions are mere inventions, devised by devious individuals to control the poor and simple-minded? No! It is simply the lack of seriousness. Because only those who believe particularly firmly and permanently have understood the true task of religion, and can, from then on, spend their whole life carefree, because thinking is, quite simply, detrimental to pure faith. going to happen to me then? Take it easy. I'm here for a different reason. 
It's like the builder. Well, if you're not here to pluck my fingernails out, then what do you want? One of the locals asked me to look for his missing boy. He goes by the name Robert. I supposedly works here. Do you know anything about that? Oh, yes. Robert. Of course, of course. He was in the other cell, but yesterday they fetched him and carted him off somewhere else. Poor Taffer. Any idea where this somewhere else could be? Well, there are rumours that Lord Davenport is preparing something in the vault below the castle. You can get there through the door in the kitchen. I've never been down there myself because the very thought of it gives me goosebumps. But if you want to risk it, you can find the key hidden underneath the vase that's beneath the wolf's head on the second floor. All right. Is there anything I can do to make your stay a bit more comfortable? These barbarians didn't give me anything to eat. And they probably want me to stew here in my own filth for a few more days. I just baked a nice cucumber cake topped with carrots when they brought me down here. I would kill for that right now. I don't suppose you could grab it from the kitchen for me, could you? Delivered as ordered. Here's your cake. Ah, oh, delicious. A true gentleman. Thank you very much. By the way, the combination for the closet in the bedroom next to the kitchen is uh, 528. I'm sure you'll find adequate recompense for your kindness. I'll keep that in mind. Bon appétit.
difficult. During the last solar eclipse, under the sign of Scorpio, Providence revealed my true and only destiny to me, and I will never forget this event. Well, many years later I finally have both the knowledge and the means to do what so many before me have miserably failed at. You are the first to be led out of the darkness back into the light, and you thank me with boundless loyalty, which touches me deeply, and is at the same time incentive for me to continue on the glorious path that fate has mapped out for me. I have not been completely honest with myself, however, because it now seems to me that it is not just knowledge and determination that make a great man. Indeed, these traits alone are not enough to establish the success of truly great minds. Truly great minds recognize at the decisive moment that they have to do things that are in complete contradiction to all natural laws and moral principles. I, my friends, have also freed myself from these shackles, and so I stand before you with the firm principle to do what must be done.
And now, spread out my loyal servants, for it is time for the next step, and I cannot tolerate any disturbance. Be my eyes, be my ears, and make sure that no one enters the tomb with impunity, because the time has come. Oh, yes, it has come. And I can already feel in my core how great changes are looming. I have the impression that half the workforce has been locked up. Are you Robert, by any chance? Yes, but who are you? I was sent to look for you. Your father, an outspoken philanthropist, hired me to find you. And not a moment too soon. The Mad Lord is up to something, but I don't dare help him with his foul works. I'll take care of it. Do you know how to get out of here? No problem. I'll sneak back into the castle. There's a maintenance hatch in the castle wall that leads to some old mining tunnels. From there, we can go down into the valley. Then get on your way. We'll meet in the tunnel entrance once I'm down here. You don't have to tell me twice. I just want to get out of this crazy place. I wonder who this special guest is.
I found our special guest. I can't imagine it's too far.
can't see or hear anything, but I feel the presence of another who has entered our sanctuary with the very worst of intentions. Why? Prevent him from advancing, O oh loyal underlings. Find him and show him no mercy.
No, he did it. He did it? Curse it be he who incited this nefarious act. Why? How did this happen? Our providence has betrayed me. Oh, yes, providence has betrayed me.
All done. It's time to get out of here. We should be in Eastdale by lunchtime. My father will be delighted when he sees me. Then let's go to the tavern together so I can show you my appreciation with food and ale. What is there to eat? I can heartily recommend the pot roast with sauce and potatoes. Well, that sounds a lot easier to digest.